University of Maryland as we take you to College Park to listen in. We will all hear from two speakers, uh, our president and our athletic director, Damon Evans. Following their remarks, uh, our athletic director will remain at the podium for a brief Q&A. I will now invite to the podium the University of Maryland president, Wallace Stilo. Thank you, Katie. And thank you all for being here this afternoon on relatively short notice. Damon and I just got back from Baltimore. We went there this morning to meet with the parents of Jordan McNair. And I want to meet with them in private to express on behalf of the university our apology for their loss of their son. I said to them, and I said I will be mentioning it publicly this afternoon, but I wanted them to hear it directly from me this morning. The university accepts legal and moral responsibility for the mistakes that our training staff made on that fateful workout day of May the 29th, which of course led subsequently to his death on June 13th. I explained to the parents that we have retained a very, an expert team of sports medicine and physical athletic training personnel to do a thorough review of the circumstances and the facts of that case, as well as of protocols and procedures. And that when the final report is available, and they expect it will be available by middle of September, and it will be made public. And I said, when that report comes, I will come and present that report to you before we make it public. But I also explained that we've been getting progress reports. And based upon what we know at this time, even though the final report is not completed, I said to the family, the university owes you an apology. You entrusted Jordan to our care. And he is never returning home again. We have looked at the preliminary, preliminary observations that were given to me and to others. Are some of our policies and protocols do not conform to best practices. Some of the actions of our athletic training staff not the coaching staff, the athletic training staff, well, they basically misdiagnosed the situation. No vital signs were taken. Other safeguard actions that should have been taken were not. For me, that was enough to say, I need to come and personally apologize. And I know that we will do not I know, I'm committed to doing the right thing. And nothing that we can do can bring closure to their enormous loss. But I made this commitment to the parents this morning, together with Athletic Director Damon Evans. We both made this commitment that no Maryland student athlete will ever be in a situation where his or her life and safety and life will be at risk, especially when that risk is foreseeable. I made that commitment to them. I'm making it now to all of our student athletes and the University of Maryland community and to all the people of Maryland.
Once we have, and I should also say that safeguards have already begun. We provided additional training to athletic training staff. All sorts of things that we did not do are now in place. The second thing I want to address are the reported allegations that came out recently on conduct that is simply inappropriate, unacceptable, of bullying, intimidation, alleged bullying, alleged intimidation, alleged denigration of student-athletes. My office is set up to receive, and we receive lots and lots of expressions of concern and uh, issues and problems from faculty, staff, students, and others. In this case, we learned about it, about these allegations from the media. But regardless of the source, what is important is how we address it. And we are guided by certain key values. Accountability of all employees, of transparency, and yes, a fair process. So as soon as we knew about this, got together with Damon Evans and others, and Director Evans, as you all know by now, put some staff on coaching staff and training staff on administrative leave. With regard to these allegations, which are very serious, they are totally inconsistent with what we stand for and our values, which is about education, preparing student athletes for life, and to be treated with respect and dignity. You can motivate people, push them to the limit without engaging in bullying behavior. But these are allegations, but we have to take them very, very seriously. And so what fair process demands is that we do a thorough investigation by an independent group and they make recommendations and we will implement those recommendations and we will monitor the continued implementation of those recommendations. To that end, I thought long and hard and put together a team, a commission of four individuals who will immediately in fact, we've already met to begin the process of this review of the practices and the culture of the football program. They are the Honorable Ben Legg, retired Chief Judge of the United States District Court for Maryland. It is the Honorable Alex Williams, retired Judge of the United States District of Maryland and former state's attorney for Prince George's County. It's uh, Charles Sheeler, senior counsel of the LA Piper, the global law firm with a branch in Baltimore and he's in Baltimore and everybody knows him. He, is, he was also a federal prosecutor for the United States Attorney's Office for Maryland. And one of the reasons I selected him is because he has a lot of experience in this area. He was the monitor appointed by the NCAA and the Big Ten Conference to monitor the, the integrity agreement, the implementation of that integrity agreement of Penn State after their scandal. And he was also the lead counsel in the investigation of steroid abuse in Major League Baseball. Those are three, and the fourth and final one is a highly respected, retired head football coach and also athletic director. It is not yet finalized, but that name will be announced shortly. This is the team of four individuals who will interview students, student athletes, parents, coaches, staff, and other people who all go forward, come forward and provide a report that, based upon the work done
by reporters and has been published. We take those reports very seriously, but I think due process does require us to lay out the facts, give people a chance to respond, and then we will act. But this is not going to take forever. This got to be an ex expedited, but yet very careful uh, review with all the confidentiality, confidentiality in terms of allowing people to speak confidentially and candidly. Let me just conclude by saying, we will do everything possible that the situation that Jordan McNair found himself in will never happen again. And if we succeed, as I surely hope and expect that we will, we will always keep alive the legacy of Jordan McNair. And the values of this university with regard to our student athletes will always be, you're here for an education, we're here to prepare you also for life, and we expect that all the people you, that you work with in the classroom and on the field comport with the values of respect and dignity and humane treatment. Good afternoon. My name is Damon Evans, and I am the new athletic director at the University of Maryland. I want to begin by saying what I said to the parents of Jordan this morning, that we apologize for the mistakes that were made. I extend now that apology to his family, his friends, and his teammates. Today, I want to update our community on what we now know about the circumstances surrounding the death of our student-athlete, Jordan McNair, and what changes we have already made to ensure that something like this never, ever happens again. In July, when I was named athletic director, my highest priority was to investigate the events surrounding this death. We needed to fully understand exactly what happened, how it happened, and ensure that it never happens again. To do so, we launched an independent review conducted by some of the leading experts in sports medicine, led by Rod Walters. That team has been interviewing our students, coaches, and training staff to determine how our staff responded that day. While the review is ongoing, we know enough now to share some of the preliminary findings. We have learned that Jordan did not receive appropriate medical care and mistakes were made by some of our athletic training personnel. Specifically, in his preliminary observations, Walters found that the emergency response plan was not appropriately followed. Second, the care we provided was not consistent with best practices. And third, that heat illness was not promptly identified or treated. Our athletic training staff did not take Jordan's temperature and did not apply a cold water immersion treatment. I expect additional findings when the Walters report is complete. That report will be made public. We have already taken immediate steps to put additional safeguards in place for all of our athletic practices and training not just football. We have changed how we practice and also how we train our staff. We have specifically changed how we practice in the heat by increasing breaks and adding cooling stations. 
I have also commissioned a second team of legal and sports experts who will review the recent allegations of unacceptable behaviors in our football program. I want to be clear that I have not witnessed any behavior as what was described in the media, but it is essential that we fully review these allegations. And that is why we are conducting an independent third party review led by national leaders. Additionally, we have placed members of our training and coaching staff on administrative leave, including the head football coach, and have parted ways with one of our members. Make no mistake, we will not tolerate any behavior from any employee within Maryland athletics that is detrimental to the mental or physical well-being of our student athletes. There is nothing more important than our student athletes' safety. Absolutely nothing. Earlier today, President Lowe and I shared these preliminary findings with Jordan's mother and father. We shared our deepest apologies and sincere regrets. As a father, there are no words to say to Jordan's parents that are good enough. I have looked into the eyes of a grieving mother and father, and there is simply nothing good enough. We will honor Jordan's life, and we will ensure that a tragedy such as this never happens on our campus again by working every single day to provide the safest environment for our student athletes on and off the field. I will continue to keep all of you informed about our work. I ask that you keep Jordan's family, friends, and teammates in your prayers. Thank you. Damon, I'm gonna answer some questions. Our first question goes to AP, uh, Dave Ginsburg. Damon, right here. Oh. Damon, uh, you mentioned uh, someone has already been dismissed. I was wondering whether you could tell us who that is. And secondly, with uh, Coach Durkin uh, on administrative leave and the report not expected to be con ended until the middle of September, uh, is it feasible that he could be on administrative leave three games into the season at that point? Uh, the first part of your question, the, the individual that uh, we parted ways with is our head strength and conditioning coach for football, Rick Court. And as far as uh, Coach Durkin and administrative lead, uh, obviously we've hired an uh, external review team to take a look at this. But as additional information comes forward, we will do what's appropriate. Um, so we'll move in that manner. Next question goes to the post. Jesse. Damon, was this, was this the first time that you, President Lowe, or anyone from the university met with Jordan's parents to apologize or speak about the situation? And if so, why, why wait two months after the situation happened? This was not uh, the first time that we met with uh, Jordan's parents. We had the opportunity to meet Jordan's parents at the hospital. I know I was at the hospital for several days. Uh, Dr. Lowe also uh, made a trip uh, to the hospital. And I know in addition, uh, I made a call uh, to them. But we felt that it was appropriate based upon the preliminary findings and being transparent that we should share those findings with them and yet again offer our condolences and our, our uh, sincere regrets. Question goes to the son, Don. You said that you had never witnessed any, any of the abuse as the, uh, when you were the, the senior liaison for the football team, do you feel that that was part of your responsibilities? If, and do you feel that, you know, that you were negligent in that area for not you know, seeing things that were happening? As, a, as I'll restate, uh, no, I did not witness those things. Um, 
Today, what we're focused on is making sure that we provide that safe environment. That has always been what we wanted to do. Uh, Dr. Lowe expressed the values that we hold high and dear as an institution, and we're going to make sure that we stick to those values and move forward. Next question is the ESPN. Heather. Damon, on the day after Jordan died, you addressed the media and gave a timeline of your account. Were you at practice? If not, where did that timeline come from? Uh, no, Heather, I was not at practice. Uh, we, we sat down and met with individuals on our staff to try to ascertain as uh, best we could what transpired on that particular day, and we provided you with the information that we had at that time. Next question goes to the Diamondback. Andy? Uh, big Time Media Days, DJ, right here. Uh, big Time Media Days, DJ Jerkin said players and coaches hadn't yet been interviewed. Why did it take about two months for players and coaches to be interviewed about the events that happened May 29th? Uh, in, in a situation like this, we wanted to make sure that we understood everything. Uh, our student athletes, we're focused on their health and the safety and the welfare and making sure that uh, we provided them the necessary counseling. This was a time of grieving. Uh, we were focused on making sure that they were okay, making sure that we had people around them to support them. That was our first priority as it relates uh, to what they were going through, a very, very difficult time. Back to the post, Barry. What behavior did you find out about Rick Court that led you to dismiss him, and what responsibility does the head football coach have for the behavior of members of his staff? Uh, when reading the article, um, in sports, you always have some uh, complaints that come forward, uh, and we look at all of those and make the appropriate uh, decisions and how to resolve them. Uh, when that report came out in ESPN, uh, the severity of those allegations was significant. I sat down uh, with Rick to uh, ascertain what had transpired, and, and based upon uh, conversations and looking at everything in totality, I felt it was in the best interest to put him on administrative leave. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, I, I, we got to take a look at that. That's why we're having the external review uh, uh, led by a team of experts to see uh, where we, we come out. We're going to go back to the sun, Peter. Uh, Damon, um, dating back to 2001 and the Corey Stringer tragedy, uh, the cold immersion treatment, temperature taking, these are very, very basic heat stroke um, treatments. The fact that your training staff did not do them. Does that say something? Uh, a lapse in the uh, in the employment in in the uh, choosing and employment of your training staffs. Well, obviously, um, we wanted to share those findings with you today because they're significant. Uh, cold water immersions is an important part uh, in this equation here. Uh, obviously, uh, we misdiagnosed and, and did not act accordingly, did not act appropriately and respond uh, to, to Jordan's situation. Over to The Athletic, Nicole. Uh, Damon, do you, do you believe that you should um, be responsible for a culture that was taking place under your head football coach? My plan uh, moving forward is to make sure that we evaluate that culture, uh, those allegations of that culture, and make sure that the environment that we provide for our student athletes is one that is safe and conducive for them to learn and grow and develop, uh, and, and that they have an overall good experience. I believe that I'm the one that can lead us through uh, these very difficult times. Dave Johnson, NBC4. Um, talk about Are you getting a lot of uh, hearing from a lot of parents about other student athletes wondering what is going on with the program? If so, what kind of communication have you had with other programs, uh, other parents of uh, students running your programs? We are having some communications uh, from parents, and we welcome that communication. We think that is significant. Uh, I will be setting up a meeting with the parents uh, here in the coming days to update them as well as take any questions as they might have. One of the things that is significantly important as we move forward with the external review, parents will be a part of that review uh, to make sure that they can be heard uh, because we want to ascertain as much information as possible as we uh, try to get to the bottom of this. Last question here in the back. Hi, Tracy Wilkins, NBC4. 
has the University of Maryland started to have conversations about policing itself ahead of any possible sanctions from the NCAA? If so, what is it that you all are willing to do? Uh, as far as what we're going to focus on is making sure right now that we look into the allegations that were brought forth regarding the behavior. That is important. We've got to make sure that uh, the protocols and the, the new recommendations that uh, have come forward that we put in place as far as the health and the safety of our student athletes on the field, that we take care of that. We've got these issues that are at hand for us are extremely important for the, uh, the welfare of our student athletes. That's what we're gonna focus on. As far as the NCAA, I can't speak for them and whether or not what role they will play in this, but we're gonna do what's appropriate. Was there an internal investigation before Georgia uh, Internal investigation, Heather, we looked, we made some, uh, I guess we asked some questions about staff to learn what had transpired that day. But all along, we felt that it was important to bring an independent outside consultant so there wouldn't be any conflicts of interest. Someone who is an expert at doing this, and Rob Walters is that individual. And I think that is the best approach. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. This concludes today's press conference. Thank you. And so we wrap things up with Maryland Athletic Director Damon Evans and University President.